should I tell you of how I lost my dear mother and the watch of a doctor who came in late and refused to help my bleeding mother because he did not have a, he did not have a pair of gloves and we did not have the money to pay for his tip in what is supposed to be a public hospital. Oh, we should talk about those at the airport that got their jobs through connections and go ahead to rubbish a poor man such for greener pastures and to the trash can they throw their dreams of traveling abroad simply because they cannot afford a 200k bribe. And corruption agencies that include Inspectorate of Government and State House and Corruption Unit have partnered with the National Debate to engage young people on anti corruption initiatives for over three years. The Inspector General of Government, Betty Kamia, says corruption isn't only ravaging government but also private sector, emphasizing boldly that more than 50% of people running this country are corrupt. To raise up against corruption, that is the only way that corruption will end. So the procurement person in a national medical stores who comes from, say, uh, Rakai, the Antonde, where I come from, they give him one 10 billion shillings to go and buy medicine. He doesn't buy medicine. He goes back to Rakai and constructs a hotel and buys a VX and goes for a holiday with his company, you take your child to hospital, public hospital, there's no medicine, there's no equipment, your child or your person dies. Then your neighbor, who did not buy medicine in the hospital, comes to commiserate with you and says, I am sorry, they give you the, the, the 500,000 to buy a coffin. And you know what we do? Oh, we thank them so much. And we put them high on the list of people to thank. This is a wonderful neighbor. And I shall never forget you in our family, what you have done, what you have done. This is the thief who stole the money for medicine, which is why your child died. Now he comes and buys for you a coffin and you hail him. On 7th this month, Members of the leadership called tribunal asked public servants to submit their declarations for income, assets and liabilities to the Inspectorate of Government, just as it was with the Speaker of Parliament. In a bid to amplify the zero corruption agenda, PPDA is collaborating with government to achieve the same among the registered public and private companies. Expected to behave in a certain way. And through the leadership code act, that is why public officers are required to declare their assets, wealth, and liabilities to the Inspector General of Government so that we follow your progress. If you declared one house this year, next year declare three houses. Or if you don't declare, and we know that you have it, non-declaration, false declaration, under-declaration, all those are offenses under the law because the leader must be put on a pedestal where Scrutiny is part of the, of, of the job hazards once you set yourself up to be a leader. You must have heard that even at the Uganda National Administration Service Bureau, now companies must declare by submitting that declaration form with a beneficiary, a beneficiary of this. And at PPDA, also in these contracting processes, if you are bidding, you must. Every contract must declare who is the beneficiary. And that will help us in finding out whether the beneficiary is our government officials, especially those who are making uh, uh, who are making decisions in those contracts. Some members of parliament who are passionate about the fight and corruption crusade have expressed what exactly is at stake while tackling the vice. Now procurement a procurement and ambulance in KCC at 1 billion and we know that ambulance is a 2013 model it is on the boat at 80 million you have bought it at 1 billion and you have followed all the procedures the IGG, the Auditor General cannot touch you because you have followed all procedures and you have beaten government at its own game now we want to follow you that money you have where have you gotten it from 
And look, you know, Muslims say to that some of these guys are not investing the money abroad that they are investing it here. But when I did, if you begin to crusade, I was in Dubai when I was hiding from Uganda for three months. I know most of those people I'm talking about, they have three years mansions in Dubai. They are the customers of Damak. They are the customers of Omar. Omar. Actually, Omar can uh, uh, all the marketeers of Omar are in Africa than anywhere in the world. Because they know where the money is. Uganda has been consistently ranked among the most corrupt countries in the world by the various indices and reports. The World Bank's Worldwide Governance Indicators for 2020 gave Uganda a score of 20.8% out of 100 for control of corruption, indicating a very high level of corruption and still remains a big challenge. Ronana Habwe, Smart24 TV, Business Today.